In this video, I'm going to show you how to find internal consistency of a scale by estimating both Chromex Alpha and um, uh, McDonald's Omega. So in order to do this, um, you can either use your own data set or you can follow along using my data set with fictional scale data. It is available down in the show notes that you, um, you can download it. To do um, Chromex Alpha, which is the most commonly done um, measure of internal consistency, you just need to type in alpha followed by the items. Okay, here I've got scale 1 to scale 20. Those 20 fictional liquor type items. And hit enter. And it'll go ahead and, and give you the reliability coefficient. Now, one thing that's really nice about finding it here in Stata is it will already on its own figure out which items, if any, are reverse scaled or reverse meaning. That's not the case in other softwares, um, at least several of the others that I've used and the others you need to either tell it which ones are reverse code or reverse coded or should be reverse coded or actually go and reverse code on them yourself. So that's something. Now that can be a two-edged sword, you know, if it assumes something's a reverse meaning item that you didn't want to be for some reason, um, that you can specifically tell it which items are reverse meanings as well. And that's beyond what I'm going to show in this video, but you can do help alpha and, and it'll direct you to that. Another thing that you can do here is once you have this initial one run, you can put comma item, and that gives you item level statistics such as alpha if deleted. So comma item is all you need. And then you'll see this pops up. This is telling me several things. First of all, it tells me which ones it assumed were negative in meaning or opposite in meaning here. Okay. It gives me the item the correlation of that item to the total of all items, including itself, and it gives me the correlation of that item to the total of items excluding itself, so correlating itself with the sum of the other 19 items, and the average inter-item co covariance with other items. And then this where it just says alpha is alpha if that item is deleted. So if you wanted to see whether removing a particular item <coughs> might increase uh, the Chromebacks alpha, you could find that information here. For example, this is 0.8971. I mean, 0.8917. If I were to remove item 17 here, it would actually incre um, increase the alpha. Now, be careful. Um, maybe you want to shorten the scale. You might use this information for that or for other reasons. Be careful that you only remove one item at a time because once you remove one item from the scale, it can change everything. Um, so I'd remove one item, then rerun this um, to decide which item to remove next if you're going to go that route, which you aren't, ne aren't necessarily going to do. At any rate, we've got our Chromebax Alpha here, which is almost hits 0 0.90 typical thresholds. Our 0.70 or higher is adequate um, reliability. 0.80 or higher is good uh, um, reliability, and 0 0.90 or higher is excellent reliability, so this almost hits it excellent here. Okay, now I'm going to go on to McDonald's Omega. Why do I do that? Well, let's talk about what, what Chrome X Alpha represents. This isn't a theory video, but you should know that um, uh, it assumes something called tau equivalence. Basically what that means is that every every single item is just as good in measuring the latent trait, I'm trying to measure with these 20 items, as any other. Every one of these is equal. In other words, if I were to do a confirmatory factor analysis, I could force all of these, the loadings for all 20 of them to be exact, to be equal, and it would give me good fit. That's rarely the case. And so, because it's rarely the case, my estimates using Chromex Alpha may not be real accurate and may in fact underestimate the true internal consistency of this scale. So instead, you might want to use um, McDonald's Omega. It's becoming more and more commonly used, more popular, and um, it is not by default built into Stata. However, it's very easy to get it. So in order to get it, you're just going to go to a 
you can either um, copy my code here or you can go to this um, website um, here, Omega Coef, and you're going to pick up um, the code for that for downloading it. You just find it here, maybe on a, the other page where all the download is where you want to click on. Um, you can download it there. However, it's a little bit easier if you instead just um, have it, uh, you know, do it straight from, from Stata. So what we're going to do is go back this other one. And somewhere in here is... Um, the code you need here it is right here. SSE install. Ah. So you want to copy that SSC install Omega CoF. Okay, and you can just copy it from me. You don't necessarily have to go to that website. So you're going to go ahead and type that, copy it, hit enter. And it'll check to see if it's not already installed. Mine was already installed, and so it'll tell it tell you it's installed if it was not. And then what I'm going to do is, in order to find it, I actually use the command Omega CoF, okay, not just Omega, Omega CoF, CoF, and I do scale 1 to scale 20, hit enter, and it'll give you this right here. Some of your items are treated, treated as reverse coded, so you can see that it, it again automatically figures that out. This is based on, on CFA when it does it, and it, it does not assume that all items equally, you know, equally measure the latent trait equally well. In other words, if a CFA was done, the, load, the loadings of each item on the um, latent trait are not necessarily equal. You see I get 0.8943 here with, with Omega, while I get 0.8917 with Chrome X Alpha because Chrome X Alpha was slightly underestimating the internal consistency reliability. So um, again, they're quite similar here. Many cases, most cases I found it doesn't make a real dis a difference, but it is becoming more and more popular to use um, McDonald's Omega.